So apparently one of the biggest discussions that's currently circulating the Halo community is whether or not we need a reboot for the series. You wanna know what's crazy? I actually covered this in a previous video and it started to make me feel like, how many times do we have to teach you this lesson, old man? While there are fans out there calling for a full reboot of the game, while others are asking for a partial reboot, getting rid of the three for three Halo games, which, you know, when you think about it, it's never gonna happen. There's a better chance that 3 for 3 gives us all the cosmetics for free and actually even pays me to play the game. So I feel like it's my duty to dive headfirst into the debate and maybe answer the question on this whole Halo reboot discussion. Are we better off rebooting the series back to zero? What are the possible solutions to getting the series back on track? Let's forget all the good story aspects of the past, throw a tantrum on Twitter, and jump right into this. So if you didn't know, we are in a complete era of remakes. You probably know this is issue Quite off, every other week or month, we always get some sort of remake that is entered into the space. Whether it's the Dead Space remake, the Resident Evil remake, the remake to Hello Kitty Island Adventure, I mean, you get the point. Before we nosedive into this reboot, I think it's important for us to understand the differences between the remasters, remakes, and reboots. Well, first, remasters are essentially trying to update the graphics of a game. They're trying to get the FPS or fidelity to an upgraded level to match the current state of consoles. And we see this often, whether it's the Halo CE remaster, the Halo 2 Anniversary Master, The Last of Us Part 1 on the PS5, and in some cases it works. However, there are times it is completely trash. Some pretty much fail because there is not much of a change between the previous game and the new one. Like for example, Last of Us Part 1 looks identical to the PS4 version, or we can get complete scams that pretend like they do something, but in reality, it's almost like taking the old ass graphics of the game and just bring it to the modern stage. I'm looking at you, Star Wars Battlefront Classic Collection. Whether we see them multiple times, whether it was the Star Wars Battlefront Collection or it was the GTA Trilogy, where they sold you falsified information, thinking that these games would get upgraded to a level that it would look good. And sometimes we kind of knew that they wouldn't be upgraded as well. Even then, the ports of these games were completely awful, proving that they were probably scams. Then we get remakes. And remakes basically are taking the original version of the game and bringing them to a modern audience, but trying to keep the soul intact. And we see these quite often, whether it was the Dead Space remake or Resident Evil one, or even it's a little bit more older in Demon Souls. And for the most part, remakes actually are pretty decent and they actually have some successes. Sometimes they add content to these original games or they just try to bring these classic games to the modern era. And even sometimes you might get some boomers out there pretty angry because they can't do the same things they used to be able to do back in the day. Like for example, when people couldn't look up Ashley's skirt like they used to back in the early 2000s, oh yeah, that, that caused a shitstorm. Sorry, you pervs, you, you can't do that. It's all about censorship. And then we get to reboots. We're basically trying to restart a series or franchise. And my fears about a reboot are mainly going to focus on the idea of what would happen if we start a series over is going to be bad or is it going to get better? And I think the best example to think about is the Call of Duty series. In the past six years, we saw a complete reboot of the Modern Warfare trilogy that we knew and loved. Modern Warfare 1 had a pretty solid start. I think the multiplayer was great. The campaign had some issues, but it wasn't really that bad. There was a major shift to events that happened and it kind of talked about the backstory heading into the series. So it wasn't generally changing way too much, but there were some clear differences between the original trilogies and what we saw in Modern Warfare 1. Now it wasn't that bad, but then we start getting into Modern Warfare 2. Modern Warfare 1 didn't really have that great of a story, but we thought, hey, in Modern Warfare 2, you're gonna to get Ghost involved, you're gonna get characters like Shepard involved, you're gonna get some real nice stuff. But well, the issue with these reboots is that they a lot of times switch the story up to meet the current writers and what they believe the story should be. So for example, when you look at Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 and 3, they basically have the same exact story with no real conflict, and most often the characters are nonsensical. It feels like all these characters chug stupid juice before they entered the game. We have characters like Price and Soap, who were just completely idiotic. Shepard was horrific. He came from being a badass older guy from Modern Warfare original series to being this completely dumbass that was giving weapons to terrorists and constantly kept losing missiles. You get characters like Alex who are brand new, but are built like the Superman who can't actually die. And I've made several videos covering the previous COD stories. And my biggest gripes was that they honestly were just telling a worser version of the original story in every single way. So all of a sudden when we bring this debate now to 
Halo and the question of, well, what's the problem with a reboot? I have several. If you were to create a new version of the story and they fail and ultimately just make it worse than the original, then it's going to feel like you have a taste of ass in your mouth. And I'm not really a fan of that. What happens if 3 for 3 starts the game over and then they create a story that completely sucks and goes against everything that we liked in the original? Are you going to be pissed off then? And I feel like old fans will never accept this new story that's being developed because it's not the story that they grew up with. I'm a Halo fan for life and I looked at the original trilogy and all of a sudden 3 for 3 changes major aspects of it, then I'm going to be pretty pissed off. And it feels like it's a spit in the face of the original fans of the series because it's like you're telling them that your story that you love is not good enough. Our story is now the lore and you gotta deal with that. I can guarantee you that there would be mobs and riots if that was the case. And the worst part of this is that if you get different writers compared to the originals, then they might not have the same intention behind the way the characters act or the way the story was being written and it could be just completely misunderstood. In my last video about this, I kind of used the Halo show as a perfect example of what a reboot can do to the story. If you haven't been watching, the Halo show under Paramount has been complete ass. I've made several videos on the series and I would highly recommend you go check them out at some point. And I cover really a lot of the problems that the show had and one of the biggest issues was its characters. The characters that we grew up loving, like the Master Chief, are complete worser and crappier versions of themselves. The Master Chief from the show is an overdramatic, over-the-top emotional person that changes their constant goals all the time. Whether it was original intent to be a Spartan, to then all of a sudden trying to find their own self, then trying to get some ass. I mean, the, the, the character is completely crap. In the original games, he was a stone-faced soldier trying to save humanity, but in this show, he's just trying to get some ass all the time. And I'm just kind of annoyed by it at this point. And then all of a sudden, you get new characters that were never really touched on in the games as much, and now you're getting the first impressions from the show? Like Soren being a really cool character, but has horrific writing behind the things that he's involved with? Being involved with Quan and this stupid arc with his son? I mean, you never really get to see the full picture of him. Silver Team, who's supposed to mirror the original Blue Team, is kind of looking like crap half the time. They get ridden off really quickly in the second season, and all of a sudden you just lose any sort of backstory you could have built with them. Ackerson, being a pretty solid villain at the beginning of the second season, who has a lot of implications in the entire Halo universe, but has horrific writing that makes him look like an idiot half the time. And worst of all, the story has so many plot holes that looks like Swiss cheese. It makes the world that we love become completely broken. And I'm just one of those people that I wish I can go back in time and straight up super kick the person that greenlit the Halo show to be put on the TV screens. But if you think Halo needs a reboot, let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you want to support my crusade to get Halo back on track, hit that thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. So if the reboot isn't the answer, Mars Man, then what is? I think I have one simple solution. How about this? Three for three, let's just make a game that has all the content available at launch. Rather than waiting for two years before the updates finally catch up, to make it a full experience. And I know people always say that every 3 for 3 game is bad. I'll be honest with you, when Halo Infinite first released, it broke every record for a Halo game at its initial launch. People on PC wanted to play it, Xbox wanted to play it, hell, people from PlayStation wanted to play it. But the problem is it didn't have any content that most Halo games have, and within six months, the entire thing capsized. So to tell me that people are not interested in playing a Halo game, you're completely full of it. I have a good idea. Why don't you make a checklist of everything that a previous Halo game had and just make sure you check it off before the game releases. All those Forge, put co-op split screen, big team battle, team slayer, actual customization system. Hell, throw in some assassinations or elites and then boom, you got a good game. And I think you can get the idea that if you actually make a game that has all this stuff intact before you damn release it, then I think most people will be okay with it. And if you just make a game that has a sensical story, most Halo fans will be fine. We saw so many people that just wanted to see Halo Infinite be a success, but they just couldn't sit there and wait for more than six months to get any new content. And I think story-wise, Halo Infinite actually set up the game to actually be able to be continued on Zeta Halo for years to come if they wanted to. And if you just take the story from Halo Infinite and then you just add characters or factions, then you can really make this world feel bigger than it is. And I also think there's a lot more room to grow and expand the franchise in multiple directions. You don't have to only do one game at a time. Why don't pay studios to make other games for you? You can have an ODST game. You can have a game on the Arbiter. You can have a game on the Forerunner War. I mean, there's so much you can do because Halo is essentially as deep as the MCU. But what, we can only work on one game at a time? Like, I just don't get it. Why don't you just pay other studios to do other games? And then the question of maybe we should just take a break from the Master Chief. I don't necessarily think you have to. I just think
think that you can continue the game with him because he is our main protagonist and we shouldn't just feel like we are restricted to do only one storyline. You can have other people make Halo games and just let, let them cook. My feeling about the situation is that I just don't think we need to overreact and all of a sudden we make a bad decision that we can lose our entire franchise to a bunch of idiots. Yes, I know the answer is not simple. And yes, if anyone could do it, then why haven't they done it yet? But I just think that when we think irrationally because of hatred or emotion, then it could have drastic impact on the franchise that we love. I think honestly giving 3 for 3 or Microsoft an idea to restart the series from the beginning and making the story worse will only get us more pissed off. I think there's a good discussion to be have about what we want to see in the future of the Halo franchise, especially as we get closer to Halo 7. And oh, would, would you look at that? Actually, I already have one of those videos made on the channel. So go check it out and let me know what you want to see in the next game of the franchise. Until next time, this is Marsman signing off. Peace out, guys.